All right, folks, back again. We're going to be going into Crusader Kings 3 this time. Um, I assume it'll be kind of more of the same of Crusader Kings 2. Um, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um, I don't care about your stupid launcher. I don't care. Just play the game. You know, it's kind of interesting that they they have like all these. So like, ah, gosh, I don't know. They've got what Crusader Kings, uh, Hearts of Iron, Europa Universalis, Stellaris. They got all these. Well, let's put Stellaris aside. But yeah, all those other ones they have like multiple versions of, right? They got Crusader Kings three, Europa Universalis four or five or something and hearts of iron four or five yet stellaris stellaris just sits there all by its lonesome self there's no stellaris two it's just stellaris and stellaris has been out since like 2016 um setting what the is this for ants why is this so small It's 1080. Why is this like 50%? Oh, God, there we go. Why was that set to one? What? Whew. DirectX 11. All right, we're switching that to Vulcan. I know we have to restart the game. That's fine. Whatever, turn it all up. What does this do? Yeah, whatever, that's fine. Um, I can jam out to this. This is some nice music. Yeah. Yeah, I like this. All right, we are going to go ahead and restart the game so that we can use the Vulcan renderer. Um, yeah, I can dig that music. Stellaris has really good music, too. Um, so if this is similar to Crusader Kings 2, we should have, a, I guess, a little bit of an easier time getting started. Game. Deep strategy game, blah blah blah. Yeah, let's play the tutorial. Why not? Petty King Merchad. <laughs> Who'd want to be called the Petty King? Well, I wouldn't go around advertising that. Welcome to Crusader Kings 3, your medieval ruler. Your reign may be brief, but through your heirs you can bring your dynasty to prominence. Land is yours for the taking. By way of sword or through marriage and clever diplomacy can extend your reach far beyond the wildest dreams of any conqueror. No one way to win, only different ways to enjoy. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, where exactly are we? We are Ireland. Alright, basically the same known world might go a little bit further to the east I guess but more or less the same is that stupid island still down here is that it yeah Canarian Canarius yeah it's stupid <laughs> why why they're gonna have me sail my happy ass all the way down here? Oh, look, there's Leon. There, there we were. That's cool. Um, all right, let's see. Well, yeah, I think we got the camera. Camera pretty good. Um, pausing. Oh, that's down here now. All right. Hundreds of years, many generations. Game is paused. That's excellent. Sometimes you will see blue highlighted text. Okay, cool. They have that from 
Yeah, that they do that in Stellaris, yeah. Um, some of these tooltips can have highlighted words, which can also be tooltipped. Duchy can lead to county, which leads to barony. Takes a couple of seconds for tooltip to lock in. Oh, interesting. So we do that. And then, I see. I don't think Stellaris did that. Oh, this nonsense du jour nonsense. I didn't, I didn't understand that last time either. All right. This tutorial at least seems a bit more informative than the other one. And I, I don't know, the UI just is a lot more usable. You can tell that this that is a, was designed a little bit better than Crusader Kings 2, I think. Now let's talk about the game. Everything takes place on the map before you. Large and small territories. Landed title titles. Smallest unit of land is the barony. Baronies are organized into large areas called counties. Counties de jure belong to a duchy. Duchies to a kingdom and kingdoms to an empire. What is this de jure nonsense? Most titles of our... What? Most titles of are considered part of a higher tier title de jure by law. For example, a ruler may be king of England, but their realm does not yet contain all the lands that are legally considered to be part of England. The holder of a duchy, kingdom, or empire always has a casus belli to seize control of its de jure constituent titles. Vassals will also decide who their rightful liege is based on what title their primary title is de jure a part of. Okay. <laughs> My brain hurts already. Um, alright, titles are represented by elaborate coats of arms. Alright, cool, that's all this... Well, I guess, what's elaborate, right? Is that elaborate, or is that simple? Are these two titles, or I guess they're two titles? I mean... The icon representing your realm is that of your primary title. The most important and prestigious title that you hold, which is the Petty Kingdom of Munster. Alright. If you hover over your character portrait, the coat of arms of your realm capital, Luminique, will glow, and the entirety of your realm will be highlighted. Munster is your primary title, which is why your realm is named after it. You also hold the Earldom of Thomond as a separate title. Alright, alright, I'm starting to pick up what they're putting down here, zooming in, right. Okay, so we've got Homond, Thomond, no wait a minute, my realm capital, Luminique, okay, gotcha, so we mouse over that, we get everything, cool, cool, um, coat of arms, Luminique will glow in the entirety of the room, we hide. Monster is your primary title, which is why my name, realm is named after it. We also hold the Earldom of Thomond. It's a separate title, and this is Thomond. Whoa. There's separate regions inside of each. Oh, Jesus. Ah, okay, because, see, now I'm picking up what they're putting down with the baronies things. Right, all right. So the baronies make up all of it. Okay, all right, it's making sense. It's making sense. Making sense, okay. So this one's got a little church, because we got the bishop there. There's nothing there, and then we've got the capital city there. Okay. All right, this is good. Um, and this, yeah, so then we also hold the earldom of Thomond, and this is Thomond, so that that's us. Great. Are we also the barony of Innes? Yeah, because you see, this is held by Earl somebody or other. So we've got, oh, we also have a claim on this, because the petty kingdom of Munster is all of that, which is the duchy. All right, so this overall thing, this entire thing here that's highlighted in green is the duchy. Then this... It's a county, right? County. And then Earldom of Innes. Oh, that's mine too, huh? Alright. 
that's another county, right? And then this is a vassal, I'm assuming. Um, held by the Earl, Earldom of Ormond. Okay, 10-4, we're getting it. And then in here, all these smaller things are baronies, which a little insignificant and don't really show up up here. But this is also mine, because we hold the title to Innis, the Earldom of Ennis. Okay. And then we also have... Whoa, we have the claim over the entirety of the Kingdom of Ireland. Alright. Um, and I assume since we have... No, that doesn't say it's a claim. I would think we'd have a claim over Desmond because that's part of the Petty Kingdom of Munster, right? You mouse over that, Desmond gets highlighted. Why don't we have a claim on Desmond separately? Or is that just wrapped up in this claim here? I don't know. Let's continue on. <clears throat> That's good. That's good. My, my mind is expanding. Um, ruling over others. All right, now we're talking about Ormond. As a ruler, you can only hold so much land on your own. You will often have other rulers helping with the administration of the realm by holding land, or titles, within your borders, making them... Ooh, excuse me. Your vassals. To find your own land, your domain, press the home key. How oh, fun. And zoom in. Once closer up, you can see blue labels on the baronies that belong to you. In this case, it will only be Luminique. Well, and it is. Okay, cool, cool. So that's a barony, that's a barony, that's a barony. It's just randomly has a church out in the middle of nowhere, but you know, you do you. Alright, 10-4. Good, good. <coughs> and then, yes, the Earldom of Ormond is held by our vassal. Very cool. I understand. Alright. Characters. You play one of many characters in this world, represented by character avatars. Your character is the ruler of a realm. You will need to make sure that your dynasty survives and thrives throughout the ages. Your titles give you power and control over territory, as well as over other characters who might hold titles of their own. Alright, here's our character. Yes, we're back here. Alright. Characters have skills, including their proficiency within a certain field. Some are great talkers, while others prefer to make their intent clear on the battlefield. Alright, so we've got diplomacy. We are poor. That's good. Uh, Marshal, we are very good at. Stewardship, we're just alright. Intrigue. And we're horrible at learning. Okay, great. Characters also have traits, which can affect skills, as well as how they react to things. These are illustrated by icons in the character view. Some traits tell you about a character's personality. Fickle, calm, or generous. Right, sure, we'll figure out what all that crap does later. Other traits are specific to how characters live their life, such as an education trait or commander traits. My traits are temperate, so we get two stewardship, health boost... Uh, opinion of other temperate characters, 10. Opinion of gluttonous characters, minus 10. And we are virtuous to Catholics. We are wrathful, so we like to kill things. Um, punish criminal interaction, very nice. And we are impatient, so horrible learning. Just horrible everything, but good at hostile scheming. Um, we lead a modest life and expect others to do the same. Is quick to anger when they don't. When a character chooses to be a contrary to the personality traits, it couldn't cause them stress. Oh, okay, so that's we actually have to have to play along with it. That's kind of cool. Traits can also impact how other characters react to you. Some people are impressed by the brave trait, while a lustful character is likely to feature in salacious gossip. That's sinful to Catholics. Oh no. Um, okay. All characters, yes all, have an opinion of one another, which drives their behavior. A little opinion can cause people to rise up against you, yeah thanks for that game, or be unwilling to help you. High opinion can on the other hand make characters more inclined to join your schemes. Okay. 
Gold. Easy enough. You need gold. Uh, pays for buildings, armies, and bribes. Passively from both your holdings and your vassals is tax. Larger vassals are more important holdings, right? Makes sense. Can't buy everything. You only need the right amount of prestige or piety for religious matters, right? So prestige is the crown, piety is the cross, and renown is the tree. This looks like the tree of Gondor there. Um, Alright, prestige tells you how respected you are. It can be earned passively over time by holding many titles, for example, or actively, such as marrying into prestigious dynasties, or fighting as an ally in wars. Whenever you earn prestige, you build towards your next level of fame. Higher levels of fame make other characters think better of you and bring powerful ways to wage war. Some actions cost prestige, like declaring war. <laughs> These actions allow you to leverage your celebrity for your own benefit, and characters won't think less of you for using them. Spending prestige does not affect your level of fame, just your current prestige. Okay, that's cool. Piety. With a lot of piety, you will have an easier time interacting with your head of faith. As you are Catholic, this is the Pope. Eh, he's off in Rome somewhere. Who cares about him? Uh, piety can be gained passively from the learning skill and virtuous traits or actively from pious actions, such as going on a pilgrimage. You also have a level of devotion, which builds over time when you gain piety and can have positive effects for your character. Similar to prestige, some actions require you to spend piety, like declaring holy wars or creating a new faith. That sounds like fun. Spending piety like this is normal, and other characters won't think worse of you for it. I understand. Lifestyles. As well as traits, your character can also pick a lifestyle. Five lifestyles, one for each skill. Lifestyles represent what you put most effort into day to day, and each one has several focuses inside relating to it. Every focus gives you a unique bonus and makes events associated with that focus more likely to happen. We have not selected a lifestyle. Well, let's pick one now, shall we? Click on any lifestyle to see its focuses. As time goes by, your character will earn lifestyle experience for maintaining a particular lifestyle. When you acquire enough lifestyle experience, you can select one of that lifestyle's perks from any of its trees. Okay, cool, I gotcha. Perks represent you practicing and developing yourself over time and offer unique bonuses or unlock lifestyle-specific mechanics and content. As an example, strategy, authority, and chivalry focuses all grant martial experience, which can be used to acquire any of the martial lifestyle perks. Completing perk trees leads to different lifestyle traits. <clears throat> okay. So, because we gain 30%, well, I mean, we get 30% more experience, so let's go with that one. Um, let's see, we already read about that. So, let's see, we can do a strategy. Luck can win a duel, a fool can win a battle. Marshall plus three, Marshall 32 experience a month. We get, what the fuck is dread? Dread is a measure of how feared a ruler is. Rulers increase dread by forming cruel and heinous acts, such as torturing and executing prisoners. Dread makes it viable to play as a tyrant, because unruly vassals can become intimidated or terrified, making them too scared to oppose you. Um, hmm. Vassals discouraged from joining factions. Vassals discouraged from scheming. Increase vassal acceptance. Increase all for vassalization acceptance. Um, I see. Chivalry. Victory comes not from blood or gold, but honor. Prowess, what's that? Aptitude in personal combat. Mm. Attraction, right? Advantage. Thirty-two martial experience a month. So we could get plus three martial. Control. Crucial for collecting taxes. Fuck it, let's go with that. Why the hell not? I understand. Now you've selected a focus, we can move on to other people. Interacting with other characters is key. Many options. You can right-click on a character portrait, including your own, to set a list of potential interactions. Arranging marriage or initiating a scheme. 
Right, open character view. Right click on your players. Okay, so this is apparently my heir. Um, Brain Mac Merchad Brain. Sure, we can arrange a marriage. That'll be good. Yep. Uh, let's send you a gift, I suppose. Alright, send a gift. Well done. You increasingly increase somebody's opinion of you. Note the feed message right there. Yep. Certain opinion modifiers last forever, like family bonds. Others will end over time, like the fading memory of receiving a monetary gift. If you hover your cursor over the opinion number on another character, you can see exactly. Yep, great. So if we go like that, yeah. Oh, that's my father? Or am I there? No, I think I'm there. Yeah, player Aaron's son. Okay, yeah, I, I am their father. Okay. I understand. Talk about your dynasty. As the game goes on, unless your character meets with an untimely accident or terrible disease, they will grow old and eventually die. It's only game over if you do not have an heir of your own dynasty. As long as your titles have heirs... Of your dynasty or legacy will live on. When your current character dies, you simply start playing a new one, the player heir. Depending on the type of succession your realm has, this is likely to be one of your children, perhaps one that you have groomed to rule. Your dynasty has its own coat of arms, which is currently highlighted and can be clicked for more information. Hmm. Yes. Very interesting. Succession laws determine how all titles and resources are divided between heirs when a character dies. You currently only have one heir, but let's take a look anyway. Okay, in some cases when you take over your new character, you may even find that they are responsible for the untimely demise of your previous ruler. Huh. <laughs> Alright. Um, dismiss. Open the realm view on the right-hand side of the screen. Highlighted. 10-4. Inspect the Succession tab. Alright, as a member of a dynasty, you also have Renown, shared by everyone in your dynasty. Renown grows in several different ways and reflects how infamous or famous your dynasty is, rather than just you. Increasing your Renown will echo down the generations for your descendants, raising your level of splendor. As the dynasty head, most powerful member of your dynasty, Renown, will allow you to unlock dynasty legacies that will benefit all of your kin. To view the dynasty legacy of a dynasty, click on their dynasty coat of arms. Sure, crown authority. Ah, oh, yes, that again. Um, let's see, male preference. Sure. Um... Male rulers can have concubines or multiple spouses if their face has the concubines or polygamous doctrine. All right. Uh, confederate partition. All children inherit equally. Under confederate partition, your titles will be divided equally between your children. New titles may be created for your realm heirs. Upon succession, all titles held by the late ruler will be divided amongst their eligible children with the player heir always being given the primary title, realm capital, and any direct du jour titles associated with it. Younger children will be given titles, starting with those of the same rank as the primary title. If none are available, they will be given lower ranking titles. Your player heir cannot be preemptively granted titles they do not stand to inherit. Younger children will have titles created for them if enough land is held. Hmm, that sounds kind of annoying. Can we, like, change that? Um... To ensure the future of your dynasty, you need family members. Getting married is a good start, but we cannot promise that you will marry for love. We already have a son. Like, fuck, chill, man. I don't need... Alright, uh, right-click my character. Select Find a Spouse. Okay. Uh, potential spouses. They hail from courts all over the world. Choosing arranged marriage. Also, some lists of potential spouses. But only with people from the court of the character you clicked. Your own character is visible on the left because the marriage needs your approval. Whoever is the liege of the other spouse will appear on the right side, as the union will need their approval as well. Arranged marriage can be useful for matchmaking between your courtiers or for setting up a specific marriage alliance. For now, find spouses more relevant for our purposes. 
There are many factors to consider when choosing a spouse. To help you out, there's a filter function available to pare down the list of candidates. Aspects to consider include potential alliance, skills, personality traits, expected fertility, and more. Some traits are congenital, meaning they might be inherited by your children. Perhaps someone with a trait like that is a good place to start. There's a lot of people. Alright, you are 29. You... I don't know where that is. House Duke Dito. Sure, whatever. You are temperate. Which, we are temperate. You are humble. But you're greedy. Or is greed good in this case? I think greed is good for us. You're greedy for us. You don't really like us. You're lustful. Ah, can't have that. Do these numbers matter? Because in the Crusader Kings 2, they said they increased... Uh, why y'all hate me? What the... Norman. Okay. Acceptance, 15%. Duke William II, the Bastard of Normandy. Why would you want that in your title? Craven. What? I don't know about that. Yeah, you see, it, I, wow, there's so many. What the? Alright, let's sort. Um, I don't really care. Uh, we want adult for sure. Um, alliances are good, sure. Any claim. Probably too old. Middle ages, 42. You ain't having any kids, sorry. Potential alliance. Alright, has claim County of Rogaland. Okay, well, let's, let's get the claims then, I guess. Um, but we do want a potential alliance. Can we get, like, uh, I mean, obviously. Um, let's stick with. Uh, Catholic. Um, yeah, we definitely want healthy. Um, there's nothing that says opinion of me, though. Not, nothing for opinion. Culture. I don't really care. Uh, inheritable. Why oh, are you so old? Earldom of Herefordshire. Most oh, so brave. Likelihood of dying in battle 100%. Wow. Stubborn. Minus 5 opinion for everybody. Mm. Not sure I like that. Intimidated by my dreadful reputation. Oh no. Trusting. Hmm. Lazy. Hmm. I mean, that's a nice trait, though. Wow. That's a pretty crazy trait. Um, sinful to Catholics, though. Mm, very bad, very bad. Ah, uh, that's that's a pretty nice trait. Let's let's I guess let's try you. Maybe I don't know. We'll accept. Okay. 
a very strange headpiece you got there, lady. Um, what the hell is this? Hmm. Okay, whatever. Send a proposal. Ah, I gladly accept you'll be joined with my sister, blah, 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 signed, uh, excellent. Oh, look at that, you like me now, wonderful. Um, I got an alliance with somewhere, yeah, but uh, whatever. All right, we've sent the proposal, we've already done that, we're married, excellent. The toast message, great. Mr. Troy, I recommend I use fine spouse for my son as well. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Well, my boyo, time for you to uh um Hmm. What is that? Genius. Wow. That is an insane trait. Unfortunately, you are three years old. Um, <laughs> Okie doke. What else we got here? Why are you... What is this? Pretty. I see. Um, Alright, well, I guess we don't need inheritable traits. That's fine, but we, we definitely want adults. You know what? Here you go. Marry that person. Excellent. Family is important. The player heir will always come from your dynasty and most often from your house. In the future, we'll have to keep an eye on your family and their line of succession. Depending on their succession laws, you might end up inheriting titles from my relatives. Not everybody in your dynasty will be landowners, but every plot of land on the map has an owner. Sometimes the owner is you, sometimes it's one of your vassals, sometimes it's another realm entirely. Most titles belong in a pyramid-like hierarchy according to their tier. Barony, ruled by Baron or Baroness. County, Count or Countess. Duchy, ruled by a Duke or Duchess. Kingdom, ruled by a King or Queen. Empire, ruled by an Empire or Empress. Every title is legally part of a title one tier up the chain. For example, each county is thus part of a Duchy. Right. Note there are many dynamic names for these titles. Your current ruler is in charge of a Petty Kingdom, which corresponds to the Duchy tier. Alright, why couldn't they just call it a duchy, not petty kingdom? Uh, whatever. We say legally, because as Crusader Kings 3 lets you play with history, there is no way to guarantee that a king is actually in control of all the titles that his kingdom is supposed to contain within its borders. We call this title hierarchy du jour, and if the structure has been broken, it is often possible to declare war over errant territories. If you switch to the Duchy Titles map mode, you can see that as the ruler of the Duchy of Munster, the County of Desmond should legally be part of your realm. Yes, we were looking at that before. Right, Munster. Um, okay, back there. Great. So, first things first, we're going to kick them over. The du jour title of Munster consists of four counties. Their names should be visible on the map. Uh... Uh, not really, but sure. I, yeah, whatever. Um, their name should be visible on the map. It's... <sighs> oh, okay, here we go. Thamund, yes, Munster. Okay, great, great, got it. I understand now. Their name should be visible on the map. Thomund and Ennis, held by me... Desmond, held by neighboring ruler, and Ormond, my vassal. These counties are made up of smaller pieces of land. Baronies, which are these individual highlighty things here, which are the individual holdings of a realm. Holdings represent settlements in your land. Yes, good. 
Holdings provide different levels of taxes and levies, as well as buildings that you can construct and upgrade depending on the holding type. We suggest you start by upgrading the bastions and curtain walls. Alright, so we click on capital holding. Oh, no holding there. Capital holding. There we go. Um, click on capital holding, select the bastions and current curtain walls. Hide tents. Oh, hide tents, as in, okay, I got it, I got it, all right. All right, bastions and curtain walls, 225 gold and three years, all right, upgrade. Well done, it will take some time for the building to be ready, though. Luminique wasn't built in a day. Feel free to close the walls and towers construction window. Okay, cool. Uh, every holding provides taxes to their holder. If that holder is a vassal, they will in turn pay taxes to their liege. Taxes are main source of gold income. Obligations can affect how high or low these taxes are. Being at war can affect the level of control in a county, which in turn affects taxes. I understand. As a ruler, you are likely to be the liege of at least one vassal. These rulers who have sworn fealty to you and are thus part of your realm. Vassals supply you with gold and soldiers, the levies. It is possible to both be a liege and a vassal at once. Open the realm view. All right, inspect the vassals tab. It has been inspected. Here's a list of your current vassals, along with some additional information about them. At the top of the list is the ruler of Ormond, right, our vassal whose land you can see on the map. This is an earldom, a county tier title inside your realm. Right, earls are counties. Got it. You could just call them counties, but, you know, whatever. Uh, come here for an overview of things such as your vassal's current opinion, which is kinda shitty. Um, probably gonna want to change that so they don't get any ideas and uprise against me, like in Crusader Kings 2. Um... Whether they consider it a powerful vassal, which they are, unfortunately. Um, oh, my council, that's right. Right, right, right. Um, taxes and levies, they are currently paying me. Hardly anything and hardly anything. Great. It is worthwhile keeping your vassals happy. This keeps them out of schemes and factions against you. No matter how mighty a ruler your character is, if your realm unites against you, either to depose you through war, or just to murder you while you sleep, your reign is bound to be cut short. Some of your vassals might serve on their council, making their opinion extra important, as they will be trusted with counselor tasks. There is a limit on how many vassals can comfortably be in charge before your realm becomes unwieldy. Going beyond this vassal limit affects taxes and levies provided to you. This doesn't matter for the tutorial, but when you start to build your own kingdom, be mindful of growing too fast. If you end up exceeding your vassal limit, you can grant lower tiered titles to your vassals. Sometimes you can even create new high tier titles to consolidate your power in a region and strengthen your hold over the lower titles de jour subservient to your new title. I understand, except not really, but that's what we have to say. My realm is the complete body of land and titles that you control, including the areas held by your vassals. Right now for you, this means the counties called earldoms due to your Irish culture. Oh, okay, cool. Of Ennis, Thomond, and Ormond. When domain is used, we are instead referring to the land that you own personally, without vassals. All right, that's Ennis and Thomond. Okay. Some things will happen that will only affect your domain, and is Thomond, while others will impact your entire realm, the Duchy, or Petty Kingdom of Munster. Okay. Note that there's a limit on how much land you can hold personally before you start incurring penalties, the domain limit. When you go above your domain limit, it can be a good idea to use the grant title interaction on characters you are friendly with, making them your vassals. As you have no spare titles to give away, you cannot currently do this, but you would otherwise find it in the character menu visible when right-clicking on a character. I understand. Council! Managing a realm is a lot of work. As a ruler, you have the help of your council. These can be either vassals or members of your court, and they act as your trusted advisors. Okay. Counselors can be set to work, and they do all different things. You can change the counselor's task by clicking on the button near their portrait. Being a counselor is a prestigious and powerful position. Powerful of vassals expect to be appointed. 
Yes, he's my... Why do I do have such a shitty... Do you have short range? Cultural acceptance. What is your culture? What is this? You're Catholic. Oh, well, you're Norwegian. You're not Irish. Everybody else is Irish. Why, why are you Norwegian? Why is there a Norwegian man ruling over my Irish place? What? And then gluttonous first temperate. Mm. Schemes are long-term goals aimed at another character. They can have hostile goals, like trying to murder or abduct, or be more wholesome, such as the befriend. Yes. Alright. We have inspected the schemes tab. Yeah, we... We have done it. It is inspected. Good time to use a scheme might be when you find a, the line of succession to not be as clear-cut and favorable as you like. One way to get ahead is to simply remove the competition, quietly and with no witnesses. Martyr attempt comes with a risk of discovery. If your attempt goes awry, it will make your character unpopular, especially with your intended target. You don't say. The sway scheme is for made for increasing the opinion someone has of your character. Let's try it. Oh, excellent. What? He's already cool. I want to do it to this guy. Ugh. Sway. 69. Nice. Alright, start the scheme. Excellent. Once set in motion, your scheme will slowly progress over time. The time before conclusion is reached varies based on the scheme's success chance, which can be affected by relevant skills. In this case, it is affected by your diplomacy. You can always cancel it. Alright, intrigue. Schemes, there it is. Excellent. Sometimes schemes can give rise to secrets. If you catch someone trying to commit murder, it's probably in their best interest to make sure you keep it quiet. You could also blackmail them to gain a hook. Hooks represent a favor you can call in or a hold you have over a particular character, letting you encourage or force them to do your bidding. As you play, you'll find many different ways to gain and use hooks. Experiment with them. Now let's pretend you've managed to get a hook on one of your vassals. Okay. Sure, sure, there we go. This weak hook can be used for a number of things. For example, you can increase the obligations set by the feudal contract you have with the feudal vassal. To access the menu for changing a feudal contract, go to your vassal list in the realm view. Right-click his portrait and choose modify feudal contract. Can't we just do that right here? You can ma modify vassal contract. Is that the same thing? MURDER! <laughs> um, notice that when some interaction is not many visible, you may have interaction available in the character. Go to my vassal list in the realm view. Okay, there we go. Right click. I don't see feudal contract, though. Modify vassal contract. I guess that's the same thing, right? Yeah, there we go. Hey! The fuck, bro? I was doing that. Yeah, yeah, that's all good. Um, war is an essential part, many concepts to go over, but for now let's touch briefly on some of them. We'll save that hook. Alright, most important events in any war are the battles, which are fought by armies, come from levies, but we can employ men-at-arms. Okay, we have opened the tab, we have 952 levies, we have six knights, alright, and we can hire some men-at-arms. When a war starts, you can raise your armies with a single click of the big red Raise All Armies button that will appear together with the war score icon in the lower right of your screen. You can, of course, raise all armies from this military view as well. Oh, yes, raise all armies. When a war is over, you have to disband your soldiers before starting another war. Rally points are mustering groups for the levies and men-at-arms. They are, will appear. 
Start a war, you'll need a little lid. You blah. Why can't I say this word? Blah. Legitimate reason. A Cassus Belly uh, against another ruler. There are various ways to obtain a Cassus Belly. You might have a du jour titles that make you the rightful liege of your target. You might inherit claims, or you could pursue holy wars against infidels. Although these are the most common, there are dozens of different types of Cassus Belly if you discover and use as you play. Fabricate claims. Great. And I swear to God, if you have me fabricate claims on some stupid ass island in the middle of nowhere, we're going to have some problems. Almost there. <laughs> We've been doing this for 45 minutes and we haven't even unpaused the game? Oh my god. Oh. Good lord. All right. I think we're going to have to do two videos on this. The first one, that's just going to be the tutorial. It's going to be all this nonsense. And then the second one where we actually unpause the game. Holy crap. All right, soon we'll let you unpause the game. There are just a few things to go over first. Firstly, it's important to know that there are five different speeds available for you to play at. All right, great. You'll be able to pause or change the pace whenever you want. For certain important events, the game will auto-pause. Excellent. We recommend you pause the game when inspecting menus or when faced with tough decisions. Definitely. To start the ticking of the game, unpause the game using the spacebar or by clicking the play button in the lower right. This will let days, months, and years go by. Armies instructed to march will move, events will occur on screen, letters will be sent, and characters will age. I understand. Are we... Yeah, I don't think it's unpaused yet. At least I don't think so. Now, as a first task, let's remind your neighbor, the Earl of Desmond, who his rightful liege truly is. If it happens to expand your realm, then so be it. Using the character interaction system that we went over earlier and selecting him the map, declare war on the ruler of Desmond. You should already have a valid Casus Belli, as his title is du jour, a part of your realm. All right, well... So, we've just had our uh, almost 50-minute tutorial here, and it's still not over, um, but uh, hey, maybe <coughs> maybe now we'll actually get to play. Uh. <laughs> Alright, so, this, we're going to, like I said, we're going to do this in two parts, so the first part um, will be this getting acquainted with everything, and I totally understand if it is skipped, and then the second part will be us actually unpausing. So, we're gonna cut it here, and we'll see you in the next one when we come back and actually unpause this sucker. So, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you momentarily.